um, discourse theory relates to interactionism. The idea that it's the interaction that really helps a person acquire a language. This is a theory by Hatch, who is a woman. These are the main principles. Second language acquisition follows a natural route in syntactical development. In other words, it's like Prussian's natural order. According to discourse theory, native speakers adjust their speech in order to negotiate meaning with non-native speakers. So when you speak with non-native speakers of Tagalog trying to learn Tagalog, you adjust your speech. Complicate, you complicated uh, forms are simplified. So this is what is called foreigner talk. And it's very similar to Mother East. Mother East is uh, known as simplified language and shorter language. I think I already shared this with you, that Mother East is shortened, simplified, and talks about the here and now. And because it has here and now, it has a lot of context. It's context, context rich. Okay. According to Hatch discourse theory, the conversational strategies used to negotiate meaning and the resulting adjusted input influence the rate and root of second language acquisition in a number of ways. Notice that this has a lot of interactionism in it. Conversational, negotiation of meaning, and adjusting of input. So it's really died in the wall interactionism. Okay, as I said, uh, the strategies, the adjusted input have an implication on the learning. Okay, letter A, the learner learns the grammar of the second language in the same order as the frequency order of the various features of the input. So this is a little bit different from natural order. Although it teaches natural order, it has to do with the frequency order. The more frequent a particular grammatical feature is mentioned, the more a person learns that. So it's in the same order as the frequency. The more a person, a language learner learns, uh, is exposed to this particular grammatical feature, the more he will learn, he or she will learn that piece of grammar. For example, first, a person, a language learner is exposed to will, and then shall, and then should, and should be, and then exposed to going to, and then the present tense. Okay, the present tense can be used to express future. For example, I am, uh, the plane leaves at 9 p.m. tonight. The plane leaves, that's present tense. But if you add 9 p.m. tonight, it expresses future. Okay. Will be, plus in form of a verb, is also can also be used to express future. Will be going. Will be eating. Will be joining. Okay. So, whichever among these is the learner exposed to frequently, that's the one that he or she will acquire first. Letter B, the learner acquires commonly occurring form formulas and then later analyzes these into their component parts. So uh, a person would learn so many sentences, would, would encounter a lot of sentences, and then later they would analyze these into their component parts. For example, my child would say, put me down when I carry her and she's with her friends, she would say, put me down when she was still very young. She would say, put me down. 
she knows that that utterance will make me put her down but she doesn't didn't know the actual words at that time yet because she didn't speak english really so when she says put me down she doesn't know the individual words but she knows that it's a formula for telling somebody to put somebody down it's only later on that she that she analyzed the words into their component parts as an example uh, for me i i have my, my usual example is Japanese otsukare sama deshita. I know that it's a formula that you use at the end of the day to thank employees or people under you for the effort. But I don't know the actual words. I don't know what otsukare sama deshita. I don't even know where one word ends and another word begins in that utterance. And yet I know that it's a formula for expressing thanks to employees and subordinates. So I ended to the ended in the part where I I am not able to analyze them. I stopped learning Japanese at the point where I could analyze it. But learners who continue learning, they are able to analyze the particular formulas into their component parts okay i'm sure some of you have memorized uh results me ultimo adios but you don't know the component parts yet okay so that's the idea the learner acquires commonly occurring formula formulas and only later on do they analyze these into their component parts the learner is helped to construct sentences vertically by using chunks of speech, putting together chunks of speech. Okay, these vertical structures, these chunks of speech are the precursors of horizontal structures. So the natural root is the result of learning how to hold conversation. When you put together chunks of speech, you're able, and then later on, you're able to analyze them and you're able to negotiate meaning that's how you learn a language through the natural world. Okay, so you start out by piecing together chunks and chunks. Okay, this is a little bit of uh, unclear. The idea here is the child first talks about a particular topic by getting an attention, uh, by using an attention getter. He utters something in order to get the attention of the adult. And then after the child gets the attention of the adult, he mentions the object. And he continues to repeat identifying the object. Now, development is produced when the child requests for clarification or comment and when there is elaboration. So the child talks about uh, brings up something and then he or she asks for a comment or elaboration or elaboration about the topic so that's the that's what researchers found in terms of discourse between a child and an adult a child starts out by getting the attention of the adult mentioning the object or the topic and then repeats the discussion about the object. He also requ requests for clarification regarding the topic, clarification or comment, and then further elaboration. I'm sure uh, you've encountered somebody who a child would first ask you, ano po yung ganito? And then you say something and then the child Asks, asks for more elaboration. So that is how they learn language, particularly through terms. Okay? And that is similar to foreigner talk. A, talk. a foreigner would talk about something and then 
he would ask for elaboration regarding that particular thing. And sometimes the foreigner would use some of your utterances to build on his conversation, on his in his utterances. He would use some of the things that you've uttered into his own utterances. Okay? To produce uh, his own sentences. Okay, so this course theory emphasizes elaboration and exposure, particularly negotiation of meaning. Okay, so, so in, that's the conclusion. Uh, this course theory focuses on elaboration and negotiation of meaning.